There's a total of five missions. We're mission number three, but the first two missions, they weren't able to dive down on the Titanic due to weather conditions. And also the Titan, the submarine, I guess something happened when they were towing it back. A ghost net got wrapped around it, broke a lot of stuff. They're just double checking everything right now, making sure everything's safe. So when we do that big deep dive, you know, you know, our odds are in our favor, that's for sure. Hello and welcome to True Crime Rocket Science, the most authentic voice in true crime. It sounds like a conspiracy or some sort of voodoo, but I assure you ghost nets are very real and very dangerous. In fact, ghost nets kill hundreds of thousands of birds, marine mammals, turtles and sharks every year. In the United Kingdom alone, over 1,250 kilometers of nets are lost or discarded in UK waters, and that's each year. And so if discarded fishing gear is such a huge problem to ordinary marine creatures, why wouldn't it be a danger to a flimsy craft made of carbon fiber, dragged hundreds of miles behind a ship, and also dropped thousands of feet down? Now, as it turns out, we have first-hand confirmation that a ghost net did damage the Titan, and that was just in the days prior to Mission 5. How do we know this? Because the D Almighty creator tells us at 11.14 in his video. It's the clip I played at the beginning of this episode. Before we get to the rest of this analysis, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do. Welcome to the thousands of you who have subscribed. If you're enjoying this video, please like, share, leave a comment. You can also hit the thanks button. And let's get started. If you pay attention to what Kohler says, he says of the five missions scheduled for the 2023 season that the first two got cancelled. And then Kohler's, that was mission three, was as well. Talk about pressure. You lose more than half your missions one by one by one. And so by the time you get to number four, number five, you're desperate to pull something off in your season, and so you push it, and you take a risk. Although it's not clear whether all of the first three missions were cancelled because of the ghost net, on Kohler's engineering dive, it seems obvious that the point would be to test the craft leaving the platform, and the Titan couldn't even do that. It's not clear if there are one or two engineering dives in Kohler's footage, but given how different the weather appears in the background, it seems to be two different days. And so on both days, it seems the Titan wasn't even able to slide off the platform. It wasn't even able to launch. Significantly, the young engineer giving the interview blames bad weather for scrubbing the launch, but makes no mention of a ghost net. And he says that while the sun is shining behind him. Midway through Kohler's footage, we see Sockton Rush acknowledge with a blink and you'll miss it glimpse at the YouTuber's camera. Oh, it just didn't seem quite right, to put it bluntly. And that's why I called it. Um, but mostly because we've got to find out what this control problem is. That's sort of important, controlling the sub. It's up there with life support. We hear an engineer specify testing parameters earlier in the video where he clearly references leaving the platform as something that they wanted to try to do and then aren't able to do. Now we have additional confirmation of what appears to be a series of serious financial setbacks for OceanGate. If we do the math where we are right now, out of the scheduled five dives, five missions, we don't know what happened in dive four, but we do know dives one, two, and three were scrubbed and that dive five ended in a catastrophe, with all crew on board lost. If we look at OceanGate's social media, both their Instagram and Facebook are mute on any successful journeys down to the Titanic, which suggests to me that there wasn't one. This raises the question, just how serious was the ghost net damage? When Kohler mentions the incident, he clearly says his understanding was that a ghost net wrapped around the Titan while they were towing it. Obviously, if they were towing it and they were unaware for any length of time of the ghost net, this could have done serious damage, a little like driving a car with a flat tire. In a careful review of Kohler's footage, I noticed what appeared to be score marks or bruising on one of the Titan's titanium domes. 
Even in a relatively benign scenario where a slowly descending craft floats down into a ghost net, the consequences can be dire. And so this is why I say this is not kind of conspiracy stuff. This is real world stuff. It might have a strange name, but it's nevertheless something that is a clear and present danger in this sort of activity. According to the Sydney Morning Herald, quote, Emily J. Tiff, a Sydney resident, made her first ascent to the Titanic in 2005 with a pilot and another crewmate and spent hours roving the wreck. At the time, there were only five craft worldwide certified to descend below 3,000 meters. But on the way back, something went wrong. The rear of the sub pitched upwards while the nose pointed down. The condensation slick walls tilted. Their sub had been ensnared by a ghost net. Jatif said it was momentarily terrifying. Ghost nets are fishing nets abandoned by trawlers that wend through the ocean even at 4,000 meter depths. They can be kilometers long and more than large enough to entangle whales. They are a serious threat to navigation both above and below the water. End quote. Now, it's not clear whether Titan overcame its faults prior to Mission 5 or whether on its way down it became ensnared in a ghost net. Let's face it, this vessel has a bunch of pokey bits that, if it did get caught in a net, would be difficult to untangle, especially underwater. If the platform got snared in a ghost net, right, the platform, while the Titan was on it, and some of the net dragged against the skids, this stress on the chassis could have bent the cylinder just enough to create a fatal flaw. And if that happened prior to dive one, well, that would have been bad luck because it would have wiped out all chances for a successful season in one foul stroke. And the question is, is this what happened? And you'd imagine if you have some serious or significant type of damage like this, you kind of need to take a sub through right through from the beginning to the end, right through all of those safety and certification measures. And was that something that Stockton Rush had any patience with? So what we're dealing with now are essentially two scenarios. One scenario where the sub is constructed with two different types of materials, titanium and carbon fiber, and it just ordinarily suffers from a cyclical failure. And who knows, perhaps that was bound to happen, fated to happen in the fullness of time. But it's possible that a ghost net may have uh, uh, accelerated that whole process of creating, exacerbating, exposing a fatal flaw to the weaker carbon fiber structure. Thank you for listening and I'll see you guys next time.